Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Alex Bale reaction. And this is the time-traveling ghost pirate theory. So, given what the thumbnail looks like, I think I have a general idea of what this theory is going to be about. Um, and it's that the Flying Dutchman is the ghost of Patchy the Pirate, I'm guessing? Now, I could... I could totally see, you know, Patchy the Pirate dying and becoming a ghost in his favorite, you know, cartoon, given that he's a super fan of Spongebob. But how... where's the proof for the time travel come from? That's what I'm wondering. Because we've seen, you know, Patchy the Pirate is very much, you know, obviously a contemporary of the show. He sent letters to Spongebob and Spongebob has gotten to them. So, did he time travel and then die, and that's where the, the time traveling ghost comes from? Or did he die, become a ghost, and then travel back in time? <sighs> yeah, honestly, just trying to think of answers is starting to make my head hurt, so let's see where this goes! So, yeah, of course, as always, the video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day, and yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? All right, so this time, instead of ending with the big twist, I'm just gonna open with it. The Flying Dutchman is the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. This is a claim that makes absolutely no sense. No, it they doesn't. They different, they act different, and most importantly, Patchy the Pirate is alive at the same time we see the Flying Dutchman. It would be impossible to prove that they're the same person, right? Well, you know, I like a challenge. This is the- Yeah, you do, evidently. Pirate Theory. You mean the big tentacle monster in my basement? Yeah. How do you know about that? I have one too. What? Yeah, I remember that twist. So, when you say you have a muse, you mean you also have a creepy monster thing in your basement giving you SpongeBob theories? Well, no, it didn't give me SpongeBob theories. It got me my commercial jobs. I didn't even know there was more than one. I have like a thousand questions right now. Like, what exactly are they? Where do they come from? What do they want? Oh, um, I probably don't know that much more than you. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, <laughs> they actually come from a meat uh, processing company. <laughs> that doesn't answer any questions how they say it out loud. Mine just showed up in my house one day and eventually it left. Wait, yours left? As in you don't have a muse? No. I just kept giving mine meat, and got me a permanent job, and then it left. Listen, I know they seem really weird and creepy at first, but honestly, they're just here to help. But didn't you have to feed yours, like, more than just meat? No. What have you been feeding yours? Mine ate a cat. Hang on, you gave your muse a cat? I didn't feed it the cat, okay? It was in my home, and then it, it took it, okay? It wasn't my fault. Okay, well, obviously you don't have a cat in your home when you have a muse. Listen, just keep giving it meat, and eventually it'll leave you with enough Spongebob theories to last you for years. <laughs> yeah, oh god. Everything we've seen, like, that's not a comforting thought, though. to continue our relationship, but things have to be very different this time. No more eating living animals, let's just stick to the store-bought meat, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, great, glad we're on the same page. You know, I'm, I'm sorry about all the shouting and the craziness. You know, I won't have anything against you personally, I think if we just communicated better, we could have, you know, avoided a lot of the issues that we were having. But mm. I'm glad we finally have an understanding. Oh god, is he infected with something now? Uh, Alright, the time-traveling ghost pirate theory. That's the, uh... 
That's the real title we're going with? Uh, sure, fine, whatever. Now, before we begin, I just want to say how thankful I am for all the support on these Spongebob theories. These videos have, uh, definitely changed my life. So, to give a little bit back to the community, today... Today, I'd like to support a small independent company out there that you've probably never even heard of. That's yeah, right, today's yeah. video was sponsored by a tiny little indie game called... Raid Shadow Legends! Oh, okay. Legends the Here's the Raid Shadow Legends of the entire ad. world. Look at these games. All these games, compared to Raid Shadow Legends, they're a bunch of stupid baby games. That's what they are. Raid has hundreds of unique characters, bosses, and clans, and it's all completely free to play on mobile and PC. What? Man, I, yeah, that's the thing. I haven't, in like newer videos, I haven't seen a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship in a while. Is the game still like popular? Was the game ever popular to begin with? And they are constantly adding new content like the Shadowkin faction, the Doom Tower game mode, and of course, the new boss battle, the Hydra. Now me personally, my guy is Barreth the Blood Soaked. He's got the cool axes, he's covered in blood, you know, he may not be the flashiest guy, but just look at him go, he's got heart. And to celebrate Raid's three year anniversary, they've added tons of new events and free gifts all this month. By using the promo code three years Raid, you'll get over $25 worth of free gifts. And if you use the link in the description or scan my QR code, new players will get a starter pack worth almost $40, full of free champions and experience brews, that is a deal you cannot miss. So scan the QR code. Hmm. Do it. I can wait. Video so doesn't stop until you scan it. Do it! I don't get paid until you scan the QR code. So we're not starting the video until you scan the QR code! Did you do it? Okay, I'm trusting you. Um, I guess we can start the video now. Okay, where does this go? Before I get into how these characters connect, I have to explain the tragic backstory of Patchy the Pirate. I'm Patchy the Pirate, president of the SpongeBob SquarePants fan club! Pa Actually thinking, again, I haven't watched SpongeBob in a while. When was the last time Patchy the Pirate was, uh, was shown? Okay, so the last time in the show was during season 13, but he's animated in there, apparently. Okay. Actually, he was animated the last few. Huh. What season is SpongeBob up to now? 14 seasons. Okay, so as of, yes. Okay, yeah, so 14 seasons. And, okay, so he's appeared, you know, at the very least once every season, it would seem. So, I mean, hopefully there's at least one more in season 14. Hmm. And that kind of makes me sad. Patchy the Pirate is the president of the Spongebob fan club, and they often cut to him during special episodes to host the show and talk to the audience. He fits in perfectly with my television theory, and clearly works yeah. for the in-universe Spongebob Squarepants showrunners as some kind of mascot for the show. Boring! Well, if it isn't my less than amusing sidekick, Patty the Parrot. Patchy is this weird, lonely guy whose only friend is a talking parrot who's constantly harassing him, and I'm also pretty sure Patchy wants to eat him. Shiver me timbers, it's Potty! <laughs> I wonder what parrot tastes like. But that's not what this theory is about. Also, uh, it took me way too long to realize that Patchy Play a Pirate is is both played by and voiced by, seemingly separately for some reason, uh, Tom Kenny. You know SpongeBob's voice actor. I, I don't know. I guess I was just you know really stupid as a child. I never connected those dots. If you rewatch all the episodes with Patchy, you start to notice a bit of a disturbing development with his character. Patchy has devoted his entire life to SpongeBob, but that devotion is very one-sided. And the yeah. more time that goes on, the more resentful Patchy becomes of SpongeBob. In the season three episode, Party Pooper Pants, Patchy throws a house party and tries to invite SpongeBob, but he doesn't show up. Say, you didn't bring SpongeBob with you, did you? Gee, I sure hope he got his invitation. I'd sure like to go to this party, but I can't read the invitation. But Patchy doesn't really seem to be that upset about <laughs> it. Ah, well. But then things start to take a turn in the episode The Sponge Who Could Fly. Patchy follows a map and goes on a crazy adventure to find the, the last legendary episode, lost Sponge yeah. episode. And after finally getting it, this is what plays. That's it? That's the last episode. 
That was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles! What a rip! So, Patchy got let down by Spongebob again, but I'm sure he'll get over it just like last time. <laughs> Spongebob betrayed us! I'm sorry I ever started this! Oh god, I remember this. Such... I remember this episode. Now, eventually, he does find the real Lost episode and goes back to normal, but this is just the start of Patchy's transformation into a much darker character. <laughs> he goes back to normal by going in reverse! In the season 6 episode, Truth or Square, Patchy throws a massive television extravaganza to celebrate 10 years of Spongebob. There is a ton of production value and celebrities that Patchy managed to get. There is no way Spongebob wouldn't show up for it. Spongebob Squarepants! What do you mean he's not coming? Ten years I've been president in his fan club! Patchy has dedicated ten years of his life to Spongebob, and he can't even be bothered to show up once. And this never even gets resolved in the episode either. Patchy tries to find Spongebob, thinks he's about to meet him, but then it turns out it was all just a dream. Mister, are you okay? Spongebob? No, it's just me. The guy in the penny. Patchy's one-sided obsession with Spongebob is making him delusional, and this is by no means the last time Patchy will hallucinate meeting Spongebob. Yeah, that seems to happen, you know, a lot with him, where it's just, like, I mean, like, he's never even gone down in, like, you know, like, a dive suit or anything. He just sends things, and like any obsessed fan to a celebrity, this assumes he's gonna get them, and then when he doesn't respond, he takes it personally. <laughs> When you know, Spongebob being Spongebob is, well, one, I'm is I'm fairly certain doesn't know he's actually famous. Again, you know, the whole in-universe TV show thing. Um, and two, I mean, Spongebob has never really seemingly been about that life. Or... <laughs> In Atlantis Square Pantis, Patchy gets lost in the desert and once again hallucinates Spongebob. Uh-oh, here come the hallucinations. Oh, oh, oh. It's ah. me, Spongebob Squarepants. <laughs> oh god, I don't remember that. <laughs> birthday blowout, it seems like he finally really does meet Spongebob. From your biggest fan. Huh? I have a fan? Ah, surprise! <laughs> it's Patchy the Pirate! <laughs> Happy birthday, Spongebob! Thank you, Patchy. But even if they don't explicitly say it, this is definitely another hallucination. Yeah, you know, given that he's a head in a box. It's right after he crashed into an island, and he's just a severed head for some reason, and he can breathe underwater. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Yeah, very important, very important, they have yeah. Another alleged meeting in SpongeBob's Road to Christmas special, but this time Patchy's fully animated for some reason, so I'm pretty skeptical about this one too. In fact, I'm gonna come back to this one. Keep it in mind because it's gonna be very important later on. Oh. That's it. You know, the Flying Dutchman is a ghost, but he's an animated ghost. And then in his most recent appearances, Patchy the Pirate has also been animated. So he's he's slowly trend where he's finally transitioning to be on the same plane as SpongeBob, and that's he's becoming one step closer to being you know, actually in the show. So, as much as Patchy worships SpongeBob and wants to meet him, he never will. And you don't have to take my word for it either. In a 2009 WonderCon panel with some of the actors and creators of SpongeBob, they talk about the rules they have for writing the show, including the fact that Patchy can never meet SpongeBob. His character is, has evolved into this pirate that's obsessed with SpongeBob. Well, they can never meet, right? Well, yeah, they can never meet. There's, there's, there's a lot of rules in SpongeBob which are there for a reason, I part of success in a way. From the very start of his creation, they doomed Patchy to be an obsessed fan who would never meet his idol. He will spend the rest of his life devoted to Spongebob, but no matter how hard he tries, he will never reach Bikini Bottom, and he will never meet Spongebob. And, unfortunately, that is the tragic story of Patchy the Pirate. That's the sad part. But, if all of that's true, then I just have one lingering question. Where does the flying the Dutchman? The behind the Krusty Krab has a message that reads, Patchy was here. Don't go anywhere, because the time-traveling ghost pirate theory is about to get crazy. Yeah, okay, so I'm just, I'm just wondering, where does he get the time machine from? And does he time travel before or after he's a ghost? Those are the two main questions on my mind right now. Turn on 
on some lights, dude. It's not safe in there. Yeah, it stung him, and now, okay, now it's starting to affect him great. Somebody was hungry. Infected. I, I'm trying to go back to the Game Theory ARG stuff I saw. Oh, God. I'll come back to this message later, but first, we have to talk about the mysterious origins of the Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman is the legendary ghost pirate that haunts Bikini Bottom. In a pirate ship. The Flying Dutchman descends on Bikini Bottom. The first time we hear about the Flying Dutchman is in the episode Squibber the Unfriendly Ghost, when Spongebob <laughs> finds a comic book about his origins. It's the origin of the Flying Dutchman. It says when he died, they used his body as a window display. Now he haunts the Seven Seas because he was never put to rest. Now, I've always been a little skeptical about this origin, not just because it's claiming they put an actual human corpse up as display in a kid's store, but because the Flying Dutchman himself contradicts it. Hmm, it's a little torn. Of course, it was the shirt I was buried in. He was never put to rest. If he was buried, then this origin can't be true. Well, he was never put to rest properly. So, I mean, you never know. So, who is the Flying Dutchman, actually? Well, when I rewatched all the episodes with the Flying Dutchman, I kept noticing that he seems to have some kind of fixation with Spongebob in particular. In the episode Shanghai, he dropped his anchor on Spongebob's home, which leads to him having to briefly join the Dutchman's crew. Then, in Born Again Krabs, he's about to take Mr. Krabs' soul, but then immediately changes his mind when Spongebob offers his soul instead. And even in the Camp Coral prequel show, he haunts Spongebob as a kid. But strangest of all, in Ghost Host, the Dutchman's ship gets destroyed, and out of all the places in Bikini Bottom he could stay, he decides to stay with Spongebob. My location where I'll be staying? Business or residence? Residence. And look at the way he mischievously smiles when he sees residence. Spongebob. It feels like this is personal for him, but why? The episode Ghost Host is actually the first time we get a bit more depth of the Flying Dutchman's character. At first, he spends all of his time torturing Spongebob, but eventually, he just wants to stay and hang out with him. Maybe stay with a friend for a while. Just for a little while longer. Even though his ship's already been repaired for three months. Actually, I have a confession, Spongebob. My ship's been done for three months now. It feels like the Dutchman has some kind of vendetta against Spongebob specifically, but also, deep down, he's just lonely and wants to be Spongebob's friend. And does that remind you of anyone? Hatchie Someone the pirate, who's yeah. to be Spongebob's friend, but also has a deep resentment towards him. Okay, but... There's like a bunch of reasons why the Flying Dutchman couldn't be the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. I mean, for starters, you know, they look totally different, right? Different yeah. shirt, different hat, and most importantly, the Dutchman doesn't have the iconic hook and eye patch that Patchy does. This is the point where I was about to give up yeah. and scrap this theory, but then I decided to rewatch the season one episode, ARG, where Spongebob plays a board game called The Flying Dutchman's Treasure that's actually based on the Flying Dutchman's real map. The Flying Dutchman's Treasure Hunt. Based on a real treasure map. And then I noticed something. One of the game cards actually shows a picture of the Flying Dutchman. I mean, look, he clearly has the same nose and face as him, but 
This looks like a picture of when he was still alive and had a darker black beard. But the hat he's wearing is it's, not the usual yeah, flying Dutchman. Yeah, it's a different Dutchman. hat. It is the exact same hat Patchy the Pirate wears. Okay, but he still doesn't have the eye patch and the hook hand, right? Well, yeah, but here's the thing. Neither does Patchy. Patchy's hook is always switching hands, and he constantly takes off his eye patch. Because Patchy isn't a real pirate, he's just pretending to be one. The great thing about Patchy is that he lives in Encino, California, <laughs> but he's a pirate. But the only thing that makes him a pirate is that he says he's one and dresses like one. <laughs> okay, fine, but. You know, all the years, I've never connected those dots. I always thought it was just, you know, a funny haha -ha gag, you know, you have a pirate living in suburbia and he's obsessed with a cartoon. And then it turns out he's not actually a pirate at all. Okay! But, but the shirt, the shirt is still very different. You know, the, the Dutchman's is all open and it's got those stripey things. Patchy's is more fancy with the big white puffy collar and cuffs. Well, in the Curse of Bikini Bottom, we see the Flying Dutchman's closet and he pulls out the exact same shirt that Patchy wears. Same fancy puffy collar, same cuffs. <sighs> Fine, okay? Maybe Patchy the Pirate and the Dutchman look the same. But... That doesn't mean they're the same person. It's time we address the elephant in the room. The, the fact that they Dutchman both exist at the same time! Patchy's ghost because Patchy is alive at the same time we see the Flying Dutchman. Yeah, like, exactly! For this theory to be true, Patchy would have to die, and then the Dutchman's ghost would show up. But they're simultaneously existing at the same time. So where does Patchy the time travel come in, Alex? an episode all about the Flying Dutchman, and he even calls it his favorite episode. We're gonna see me favorite show, Shanghai! Ta-da! It is physically impossible for Patchy and the Dutchman to be the same person. Or is it? Things are about to get str Wait. So... This favorite episode of the show... Oh god, we have some sort of weird bootstrap paradox going on here. Oh no. Stranger. Thank you once again for supporting us at Happy Meat Farms. Together, we're building a better future. Cut! Um, let's move on. So that's where she got her gig from. Okay. Hey, Victoria. Uh, I tried to work things out with the muse, like you said, and then I'm pretty sure it, like, bit me or something, and now I'm, like, feeling really weird and craving raw meat. Uh, could you just call me back, please? I'm starting to freak out a little bit. Yeah, that would definitely freak anybody out. Victoria, where have you been? I've been trying to call you all day. Hey, sorry, I'm at work. Okay, so like the muse like bit me, I think, and now I'm like craving raw meat and- Yeah, I know, I got your messages. Just calm down. This is a good thing. How is this a good thing? It means it's almost over. Okay, here's what I need you to do. It means it's almost over. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. When I rewatched all the episodes with the Flying Dutchman, I noticed something strange. In the season 7 episode, The Curse of Bikini Bottom, the Dutchman gets a girlfriend, but starts to freak out when she wants to get married. She wants to marry me! I ain't the marrying type! But the Dutchman not being the marrying type isn't entirely true. Back in season 3 during Ghost Host, we see that the Dutchman was once married. Is that a wedding ring? Oh, this shows nothing. All right, but so what? You know, this just seems like a small continuity error between seasons. No surprise for SpongeBob. But yeah. in the season six special, SpongeBob vs. the Big One, there's an even stranger moment like this. The Flying Dutchman bumps into Mr. Krabs and says this to him. Ah! It's a Flying Dutchman! Ah! He says he's never met Mr. Krabs before, but there are two whole episodes from previous seasons dedicated to the Dutchman trying to steal Mr. Krabs' soul for being too greedy. They're even on a first name basis. Oh. Okay. So we're. Hmm. So we're going into the whole thing where we're not meeting the Dutchman linear. Uh, in like linear time for him. He's like jumping around. And each time we meet him, it's at a different point in his time. 
Oh god, oh no! Eugene Krabs! It's some guy I've never seen before! Alright, so another weird inconsistency with the Dutchman, but I'm still not convinced that it's not just lazy writing. But back in The Curse of Bikini Bottom, there's a moment that cannot be written off as another continuity error. SpongeBob and Patrick accidentally shave off the Dutchman's beard, and the Dutchman claims the beard won't grow back for another thousand years. Your beard will just grow back! You know nothing of my facial hair! It'll take a thousand! years for my beard to grow back. But by the end of the episode, we cut to several months later, and his beard is back. The curse will wear off when my beard grows back. Several months later. She wants to marry! It's not like this is just some plot point they forgot about between episodes. This, several months later, is in the same episode where the Dutchman says the beard takes a thousand years to grow back. It'll take a thousand years for my beard to grow back! Several months later. Why the fuck would they include this line if they were just gonna contradict it a few minutes later in the same goddamn episode? They even blatantly mention that it's several months later twice, as if they're trying to make you realize how inconsistent it is. I mean, it, he could have literally just been saying that to make a point and trying to, you know, scare them. I mean, it's not an out there possibility that, you know, the, the Flying Dutchman likes scaring people. <laughs> several months later. Well, here we are several months later. So what does any of this mean? Why are the writers of SpongeBob intentionally making the Flying Dutchman as inconsistent as possible? Either that or he might be wearing a fake beard. You never know. Well, the only way that this makes sense to me is if we're seeing the Flying Dutchman non-chronologically. And by that I mean, the Flying Dutchman is time traveling. Just, just bear with me for a second. For Spongebob, only several months have passed, but for the Dutchman, it actually was a thousand years later. The Dutchman didn't recognize Mr. Krabs in season six, because for him, this is the first time they've met. And from his perspective, the episodes where he tries to take Mr. Krabs' soul haven't happened yet. The Dutchman's not the marrying type in season seven, but he probably actually does end up getting married to the giant monster, and that's why we see him with a ring in season four, because the past is the future for the Flying Dutchman. Whoa, 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 okay, okay. Let's uh let's calm down for a second there, Alan. Hmm. So what's causing him the time travel in the first place, though? That's what I want to know. This time travel idea does fix a lot of problems with the Dutchman's continuity, but claiming a character has time travel powers is a major leap. I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong, the Flying Dutchman is a very powerful ghost. He can teleport, he can shapeshift, he can grant wishes, but We've never seen him manipulate time. You get three wishes. Wishes? I wish we had known that earlier. Okay, you got two wishes left. Huh. It's literally, his magic could literally just do it. Right. Oh my god. Okay, so the Dutchman's time traveling. And you know what this <laughs> means? The Flying Dutchman could absolutely be the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. And I'm gonna prove it. Oh no, what's he gonna do now? Those are some pretty dark circles under your eyes, man. Oh, hey Alex. What's up? Hey Wes, uh, sorry for just barging in on you like this. Um, I was actually wondering maybe if you'd want to watch my new Spongebob theory, maybe give me some feedback. Dude, yeah, absolutely. I love those videos. Come on in, man. How's the uh, film thing going? Oh, you know, uh, funding's a nightmare. Should we figure it out? Um, so just uh, give it a watch, tell me what you think, and uh, is it cool if I use your bathroom? Yeah, no problem, it's, it's just right through there, so. Cool, uh, I guess enjoy. Alright, so this time, instead of ending with the big twist, I'm just gonna open it. The Flying Dutchman is the ghost of Patchy the Pirate. This is a claim that makes Is he 
going to plant a muse? Okay, so either he's going to turn into the Muse, which given that there are, you know, several more videos in the playlist, I highly doubt, or B, when he was stung, he wasn't poison or anything, he was like, he's he could potentially be like incubating a baby Muse and he's gonna like throw it up and that's why he had like the, the meat, the, 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 um, the craving for raw meat. Oh, oh god, that's not nice. Oh. So, if Patchy the Pirate eventually becomes the Flying Dutchman, that means at some point in the future, Patchy is going to die. I mean, everybody does. That's not really a surprise there. Again, it's the whole thing that he becomes a ghost with time-traveling powers that's kind of the real surprise going on here. Except, here's the thing. I think Patchy is already dead in present day, and we have already seen his death on screen. Remember that Christmas special I told you would be important later on? It's the season 13 episode Spongebob's Road to Christmas, and as of recording this, it's the latest episode in the Spongebob timeline. Spongebob does meet Patchy in this episode, but for some reason he's fully animated instead of using the usual live action style. Ahoy Spongebob and Patrick, it's me Patchy the Pirate! It honestly feels kind of creepy for some reason, especially since the creators themselves said that Patchy can never meet Spongebob. Well they can never meet. Right? Well, yeah, they never meet. Is it possible that this isn't the real Patchy? Well, the last time we saw live action Patchy was in SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, and that episode ended with him being fired out of a cannon and crashing into an island. Fire! Immediately after that, Patchy's severed head shows up and meets Spongebob. But I already explained how this is clearly just another hallucination, and he's probably just gonna wake up on the island disappointed that he didn't actually meet Spongebob like every other time. Or maybe that's it, he died on that island. Which is why he's then a cartoon, and then a ghost. And that why he hangs around Bikini Bottom so much, because it's the... Oh. But, what if this is something more than just a simple dream that he can wake up from? I mean, the last shot we saw of the real Patchy was him and Potty, face down in the sand, struggling to get out. What if they didn't? And this is what Patchy is hallucinating as he dies. During this hallucination, he begins singing the show's theme song with Spongebob to wrap up the episode. Oh! Having a birthday under the sea. Me, 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 me. But as they're singing, we briefly cut to this horrifying shot of Patchy's body with Potty's head lying on the island, violently convulsing in pain. What? It happened so quick that I didn't even process it the first time. But goddamn, that is some terrifying imagery for a kid's show. Why the fuck did they show this? Is this some kind of PG symbolic way to show Patchy and Potty suffocating to death in the sand? Holy shit! <sighs> okay. okay, so let's say Patchy and Potty, the hosts of the SpongeBob SquarePants television show, are dead. What happens now? Well, the show must go on. The SpongeBob SquarePants television show has to continue without him, but they need a new host to replace Patchy. Except, are they really gonna tell their young audience that their beloved Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parrot are dead? No, they're gonna replace them with animated actors. And they're using actors. <gasps> Hey, that's showbiz for you. But what happened to the real Patchy after he died? Well, he became a ghost and could finally meet his idol SpongeBob, except when he goes to Bikini Bottom, what would he see? SpongeBob and all of his friends partying without him. Patchy dedicated his entire life to SpongeBob. He even died for him, and SpongeBob never even knew Patchy existed. And that resentment that's been building up inside of Patchy for all of these years finally explodes. And this is how Patchy the Pirate becomes the Flying Dutchman. Patchy is done pretending to be a pirate and dressing up in his fake costumes. 
Now he turns into a real pirate and gets a ghost ship. Now he gets a new look, a new identity, and now we can finally live out the fantasy of being a real pirate. Remember that board game that they said was based on a real map from the Flying Dutchman? Based on a real treasure map. We never really did see the map that it was based on, or did we? Remember when Patchy was looking for the lost Spongebob episode? He used this map to find it. Now at first I thought these two maps didn't look all that similar, but the more I looked at it, the more my mind was blown. Same red X in the middle, you got yeah. the compass, the palm trees, a turtle, a fish, but most importantly, they both have the forked tree. Half a league to the forked tree. Look for the deacon's goose through the fork in the old tree. That is a very specific detail. You would not just see that on any random map. The flying no. Dutch Oh, yeah. based his map off of the one from his past. So he's become the Flying Dutchman now, and his main target for haunting is, of course, the one who ignored him his entire life, SpongeBob, SpongeBob. SquarePants. But how did Patchy become such a powerful ghost who can even manipulate time itself? Anger. Anger is power. Well, there's actually an episode in season 12 called The Ghost of Plankton that gives us a pretty clear understanding of how ghost powers work. It basically just takes time and effort to grow your powers. Patchy's already given SpongeBob 20 years of dedication, might as well go a little further with it as the Dutchman. Patchy yeah. travels back in time to visit all of his favorite, most cherished SpongeBob episodes, including his favorite episode, Shanghai. We're gonna see me favorite show, Shanghai! Except now, he's not just watching the episode, he's the one in control, and he's gonna make Spongebob pay for everything he's done, and he's gonna make him pay over and over and over again. Oh, I just realized, yeah, that technically means that, yeah, that um, he's, uh, he's also a vegetarian now. Hmm. But then, we get to the episode ghost host. Patchy initially moves in with Spongebob to torture him, but as much as he tries to deny it, deep down he's still that devoted fanboy who just wants Spongebob to be his friend. As much as he wants to pretend to be the Dutchman, deep down, Patchy is still here. And that is why, if you go to the Krusty Krab after closing, and you go out the back to the dumpster, you can still read the words, Patchy was here. Yes, he, was. he certainly was. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the time-traveling ghost pirate theory. Thank you very much. Oh shit, what about Potty? He died with Patchy too, right? What, what the hell happened to him? Uh, uh, well, birds don't have souls. We know this. Uh, uh, I, I can figure this out. Just give me a second. Let me just quickly <laughs> rewatch every single episode of SpongeBob. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Gotta watch the spinoffs too. Okay, let me see. The motherfucker ate him! I wonder yeah. what hair it tastes like! That is the time traveling ghost pirate theory, baby! I am done! Woo! See ya! Thank you again so much for watching. This was an especially tough right, one to yeah, figure what out. Yeah, what does pirate taste like? Probably not very if good. If you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Are you telling me that he was in the ba that he was in the bathroom for half an hour and he never noticed? Hey Alex. I finished the theory. Pretty good stuff, man. You doing okay in there? Yeah, not too good evidently. down here. Sorry. I must have got lost. Th that's okay. Uh, I, I finished the video. What'd you think? It was good. Hey, is, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Why wouldn't everything be okay? I mean, come on, dude. You're... You're acting weird. You know, you're right. I have been... feeling weird lately. Wesley, I have a confession to make. I didn't come here to show you a video. Well, why are you here?
So, okay, now I'm just thinking. Does that mean that, um... Oh god, what was her name? The, the, fr the other friend. Does that mean that she was potentially responsible for giving him... Al uh, for giving Alex his muse? Is that what happened? Ew. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, um, sorry about all of that, uh... Turns out I was being possessed by a meat monster and I had to throw it up to save my soul. I think I'm coming down with something. Sorry, man. Uh, I'll clean it up. Uh, but you should probably go, though. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, sorry again. Hmm. How are you feeling? Like my stomach just got pumped. You'll feel better soon. I don't know how to feel about what I did. I get it, but you did the right thing. And soon you won't have to worry about your muse at all. God, yeah, he was throwing it up. <laughs> now you can have your own SpongeBob theory. <laughs> deal with it on my own anymore. Yeah, I mean, I get how weird it all is. See you. You must have given someone else a muse too, right? Did you give me my muse? Yeah, I was right. You needed help. It worked, didn't it? Good night, Victoria. Well done. Yeah, of course it doesn't go away, right? Yeah, of course. Oh god, yeah. So that was number eight. And so sticking with just the, the theory part, the thought that the Flying Dutchman is the ghost of Patchy the Pirate who got the ability to time travel is, is really nuts. Which, okay, actually going back to the whole thing. So you'd think with, you know, Patchy being such an avid fan of Spongebob, he'd know who Mr. Krabs is. So, I mean, potentially I could see that working out in one of two ways. The first one being, well, maybe it just, it took uh, him so long to develop his ghost powers that he legitimately forgot about Mr. Krabs. Or two, maybe because of, you know, Mr. Krabs is the beard and the hair and all that, he legitimately did, didn't recognize him. And uh, on the other half, like the don't, on the Muse front, the next video is called Don't Feed the Muse 2, and it's like the Spongebob Conspir Con Conspiracy Fear- Spongebob Conspiracy, uh, number 9. So, we're moving away from Spongebob and more into the- the Muse itself. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. But, two, um, after this, there are- yeah, so, uh, Alex, a little while ago, put all of the theories together into one giant video with eight small mini theories sprinkled in at like eight new theories now i was contemplating like how was i going to watch them was i going to like just go through the video and cut out the parts that involved like older theories that i already watched but literally a couple of days later alex released another video eight spongebob mini theories where he basically took all of the mini theories from the mega video and put them into their own video 
So yeah, um, when I get to that part, I'm going to just end up watching the mini theories by themselves, since by that point I would have watched, you know, all the other theories already. So yeah, that will be definitely it for now. So of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day. And yeah, with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.